All right. Thank you so very much for staying with us. It's a news hub today, Tuesday, 9th of July, 2024. We're moving on to uh, security matters. And um, we are looking at uh, extreme the gains of Tinubu's administration. Uh, we focus uh, on national security. We have joined us from our Abuja studio, uh, Mr. Terence Kwanom, who is a security expert. Thank you so very much for joining us on News Hub today. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, great. Um, so, so let's start um, from a general note. Uh, we all knew that indeed there were challenges, there were all manners of uh, security challenges across uh, different parts of Nigeria, from the north, of course, as well to the south, to the east, and everywhere else. As we speak today, uh, there are still quite a number of um, security issues. So let's start from that general perspective. How much, how far would you say we have made progress in terms of um, stabilizing, uh, you know, our nation security-wise? Well, thanks so much for that question. Uh, the fundamental thing is, well, after one year of Tinubu administration, uh, we can say that we have not created uh, a new security challenge uh, because during the Jonathan's era, we had the Boko Haram on our hands. And with the coming of President Buhari, we had the bandits and the Fulani herders that resurged and almost overwhelmed uh, even the activities of Boko Haram in this country. But since uh, the Tinubu administration has come up. Uh, we are just tackling what was researched uh, during the previous administrations and uh, the roads that were blocked in the north that became unpassable. Uh, today, most of those roads, almost all of them, uh, they can use them at least within some certain hours. They are not completely blocked again. And uh, when the bomb went up in Wazoo, it was a surprise to so many Nigerians because so many Nigerians thought that peace has returned to Borono State. And so uh, basically that is an achievement that a bomb went out in Borono and people were surprised. So it's a level of improvement. Even though up to now they are killing Nigerians on a daily basis, but that a new challenge has not come on our hands. We are managing what we have. We can say that it's an improvement to what, what's happening in this country. And basically if there are synergies, between the states and the federal government because I know that securities has greatly been deployed in places that there are still serious challenges uh, so that things can return to normal. Uh, you see the uh, upsurge of uh, food prices in the countries because of uh, most of our farmlands have been taken over uh, by most of these challenges that we are having. And so the, all the ungoverned spaces in this country that people can use for farming are occupied by bandits, by terrorists, by Fulani headsmen, and X, Y, Z. And so it is the government needs to now sit up and be able to synergize their strategies within all the security forces that we have and in collaboration with the communities around these communities so that we can be able to secure our country and return to normalcy. Thank you so very much for that um, opening uh opening remark. But then, Terence, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at um, the figures right about now, quite some staggering figures when we look at um, the numbers of people that have been killed in the last one year and the numbers that have been abducted in the last one year. Pretty staggering figures. So it begins to, and then the perception you get, uh, the perception that has been created recently, we've had series of abductions and series of abductions in, in, in latest times. You begin to wonder if indeed um, there are gains that we want to celebrate in terms of the fight against insecurity in this current administration? Yeah, it is a, a normal situation when uh, security are uh, after terrorists. When they are running, they are more dangerous than when they are confronting uh, because they use human shields most times to escape uh, from the security forces. And that is why we keep warning citizens that at any time they are making some gains in trying to end this insecurity. We should be watchful how we move. We shouldn't just uh, be in places that are quite isolated because the lone wolf attacks that comes from these terrorists, when they are running, they are more dangerous because they are no longer looking for targets. 
they are looking for people that they come across either to make a statement that they are still effective or they found you in an isolated environment where they are running to and they use you as human shares and xyz this is the knowledge that most citizens of our country doesn't know and we need to advocate these things for them to be able to know that we are in more dangerous times at the moment because the terrorists the bandits they are running their security forces are seriously after them those times that they occupy communities and they completely took charge of local governments and they could only allow you to come in at their discretion is no longer there in this country because if you could recall some few years ago about four local governments in Niger states about three to five in Kaduna, Kasina and, and, and all of that. But now all the local governments has been recaptured back by our troops. And so obviously they are on the run. They are in our forests, they are in our bushes. And so it's, they are more dangerous at the moment because they are looking for human shades. They are looking for people to kill and make a statement that they have not been depleted completely. And so it's more, we're in a more dangerous situation, especially in the north. So our citizens need to be careful. And if they must have a movement, it should be very important. And they shouldn't be in isolated environments because it's going to be very dangerous for them. Very much indeed. Uh, let me take you again to the efforts that we have seen before this administration and now, uh, particularly with, with, with respect to the kinds of collaboration that you expect from civilians and the security operatives. For example, we, we had what they call the JTF, the Joint Tax Force, which also you know, had the civilian component in it. And, and, and in the last, uh, uh, recently, we also had uh, some kind of regional arrangements in terms of some vigilancy. For example, in the southwest, we have the Amoteco Corps that we have. How much of um, impact would you say this kind of collaboration in us had uh, in the last uh, one year? Well, uh, in the last one year, most of these uh, efforts have been institutionalized. And just like you've mentioned, I'm taking the vigilantes and the joint tax forces around the countries in every state has been institutionalized. And so, and actually that is the best way to go because in these situations, the intel you're supposed to get is supposed to come from the community. And until you have those kind of uh, security arrangements, you cannot be able to get proper intel. Mind you, at a point, the citizens have lost confidence in our security operatives, and they had preferred to give intel to the bandits and the terrorists so that they can be able to live peacefully within their communities. And that is why, at most times, we have lost our security forces through ambushes because of the intels that were released to uh, the terrorists and the bandits. But now that they institutionalize the, the joint tax forces and the vigilantes, I think confidence is returning back to the communities and the interest they are giving out to the security forces is actually helping. Because if we could look around properly, it is difficult to say any of our communities is totally in control of these bandits, which is exactly what we wanted. Now that they are in the bushes, if the government is actually serious in taking them out, we can be able to use drones and, and technology to be able to fish out these guys where they are hiding in the bushes and forests to take them out. Uh, we, we, our, our time is fast spent, but just before we go, this idea of institutionalizing the vigilantes and the civilian um, engagement, uh, how, how do you put that side by side, the argument and the agitation for state police? Uh, some people have argued that, um, you know, this could be a sort of problem. Could that in any way be part of the solution to dealing with our security challenges? Very briefly, sir. Yeah, yeah, we are long due for a state police because most of the security forces that we have in our states are even being funded by the state government. The state government gives them utility vehicle, gives them, uh, fund them to be able to do their operations. So it means our states are ripe to have state police. And we are, it is a constitutional provision that before you are able to make laws, you should be able to have a security that can enforce the law. So why will you have a state assembly without its security in place to be able to enforce those laws? We don't expect the state assemblies to make laws for uh, the federal security forces to come and enforce them. It's wrong. And so we are due for state police, and we have challenges on our hands for us to be able to think in a patriotic manner to bring them on. 
Um, interesting. We have to run as quickly as we can right about now, but help me understand what you think um, uh, needs to be done that is not done, that is not being done at the moment. If we must uh, win, if we must um, have a, a proper grip of uh, this um, uh, renewed um, banditry that we're having, because as I use the word renewed banditry that we're having in recent times. What must we begin to do as a matter of um, of um, importance? I think for now, asymmetric warfare has gotten to its limits, and so we need to bring technology into this crisis, because if we look at the terrain that uh, these bandits and terrorists are hiding at the moment, it is actually difficult uh, for you to just go in and engage them in asymmetric warfare. And so we expected the government to be able to use ICTs to, for drones to be able to get into those forests and thick bushes uh, to fish them out because it is very risky to even put troops in an ungoverned space that has already been taken over by a terrorist. Obviously, you are going into a strange territory and most times you run into ambushes or dynamites that have been set up for you. And so we expect that technology should be brought into this war so that we can be able to end it once and for all. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we have to go now. We're speaking with um, Mr. Terence Kwanom, a security expert who joined us from Abuja Studios. Thank you very much indeed for your time on the show today. Oh, my pleasure. Have a nice day.